Today's show is sponsored by the 2019 season of Savage Race. Typically around this time of year, Savage sends me some new copy to read and then I add my own, you know, personal flair as I do for the host read as they're called here in podcast land. But you know what? I'm going a thousand percent MBD on this one because I love Savage Race. I've been running Savages since 2012. They know me by first name. They know my kids by first name. First of all, Savage takes the cake for the We Care Award. They put on great races and you can feel that love, but also if there's ever been any issues, they always take care of it. They always take care of their customer. I just love how they do that. They continue to innovate. Every year they throw at least a couple new obstacles in there. They're super fun. I really love Savage Race. This year, they're up in the game on the Blitz. That's their new short course. So you can win the classic Savage Distance Race on Saturday, then the short course on Sunday to double up. Ladies and gentlemen, I love Savage Race. Please go check out their races. Everyone says, oh, they won't come to the West Coast. You know why? Because they're not idiots. They can't just move overnight across the country. It's expensive. We all know what happened to the last company that tried to do that. This could be the longest host read ever. I love Savage Race. Check out SavageRace.com. Yeah. Get up. Welcome to the Obstacle Racing Media Podcast with Matt B. Davis. With over 300 episodes since 2012, Matt has produced the most consistent podcast in OCR. Each episode, Matt speaks with race directors, athletes, and industry insiders to bring you the most in-depth interviews and conversations in the world of obstacle racing, adventure runs, and ultra marathons. If you have small children nearby, now is the time to put on some headphones or send them off to watch Phineas and Ferb, as there are occasionally four-letter words. Which are not bleeps. Now. Here is your host. Now here is your goddamn host. Now here is your host, fucking Matt B. Davis. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the Obstacle Racing Media Podcast. I am your host, Matt B. Davis. Would you believe episode number, wait for it, 333. Wasn't it just a moment ago we were at 300? Wasn't it just a short time ago we hit 250? Thanks for staying with us. Thanks for listening. Today's show is sponsored by Savage Race. As you heard in the early thing, go do one. Go do a Savage Race. They're awesome. Next to WTM, next to TM, they're my two faves for innovation. Absolutely. Go check them out. That's the sound of afternoon Duncan, ladies and gentlemen. Real talk, I'm in my house. It's the Monday before Thanksgiving. And funny enough, this episode's about Will Hicks, which you're going to hear about in a minute. But I remember Will Hicks started World's Toughest Podcast because he said that he'd hear me after part three and go, that's enough. That's enough. You guys are sick of it. Let's move on. And he wasn't. So I always think of that this time of year because I've already put up, I don't know how much fucking WTM content. Guys, there is a shitload of WTM content out there. And a lot of it's really good. I'm not going to say what's bad because you can decide that. And you guys, you guys know I call a spade a spade. Um, But Javier Escobar, 75 miler, silver bibber. Great job, buddy. Has been making some videos for us. So I'm about to put that up. We just put out our video, Ryan Mead, hockey stick GoPro genius, plus Jeff Marier, editing genius, and Matt B. Davis is this looks good to me. Let's print it. Genius. Our video's up. Will Hicks has, I think, multiple episodes up. Obstacle Running Adventures. I think one or more adventures already up. A lot of, I, I kind of was this morning was like, uh, maybe I'm over it. Maybe I'm just sick of like, I shouldn't even put this up because it's WTM based and maybe I should give people a break. And I'm going to give you a break in terms of, I have even more. I did a live thing with Mendoza. I talked to Javier in his car. I'm going to wait a little bit on those, but this we're getting to right away ish. After we talk about a couple of other things first, first of up Patreon. Oh no, no, no. Before Patreon. Cause I don't want to forget this stats. I said, I thought somewhat casually, Hey, who's good with stats? Boom. Did you guys come out in a force with a vengeance? I don't know what the phrase is, but I've heard from several of you and there is a team Dare I say, there is a team right now, very much possibly as we speak, digging into the data. This is a dream for me. This is what I've wanted all along. And it's one of those things that I'm, you can visualize me tapping my forehead with the front of my heel of my hand. Can you hear that? That was my skull. I'll we'll cut to that if I remember. Oh, you should be coming on pretty soon, dude. How much do you smoke? 
This will be a little demonstration of that. Listen, listen up. That was my skull. I'm so wasted. Because you guys came through with it. So you're going to be able to see who had the most miles ever. Who's got blah, blah, blah. How many miles do people get per year? As in how many award bibs are given out? We've got an eight-year sample now. Three different locations. Multiple temperature differences. People learn obstacles. People get better at obstacles. Blah, blah, blah. We've got some nice fun data to look at. And I want to say thanks, and I'll acknowledge those people once we once we get it a little bit more going. Once we get that flushed out a little bit more, I will uh, give credit to those people, and we'll talk about kind of what we're going to do moving forward, because I got a lot of ideas uh, how I can help you be better, help you be better, how we can help ORM continue to be the leader, because I've always wanted a team that could do this kind of stuff, and uh, only so much time I have and only so much resources and money, frankly, I have to, you know, make this kind of stuff happen. But since I had such a huge response to that, I'm going to go ahead and do this. What other skill is out there? What skills do you have that you would like to exchange for free races and to be part of a cool brand and to help either entertain or inform the OCR industry? Are you good with Photoshop? Are you good with editing? Are you a great writer? If you're a great writer, we're kind of good on the review tip. We get plenty of reviews every year, unless you live somewhere that nobody lives. If you live in a country we haven't reviewed much, we want to hear from you. If you live in New England or New York or Georgia, we've got a gazillion interviewers from those areas. Sorry, we're just not taking any right now. But what we do have openings for, you want to do some research, you want to do an op-ed, some opinion pieces, you know, I, I feel pretty strongly about X and I think I've got, you know, I think I've got a good, uh, I can string a word or two together past just, you know, an angry comment. Are you good with music? You want to write a new song? You want to write a new closing song? How about that? Opening song contest. You write a song that I use at the end of Obstacle Racing Media's podcast. I don't know what that'll even be. It's at least worth a race. It's worth at least, I'm going to say three free races, maybe more. I love that song we've got. I love the Moto Gators version of Running Bear, but you know what? I'm open to change. We're, we're, I almost said five years in. We're fucking seven years in, guys. The podcast started June of 17. Sorry, June of 12. That means in June of 19, that'll be seven. So we're at six and a half. So I'm calling you out, calling you out. I'm putting the call out there. Send me a note. I'm reachable on all the friggin' platforms. I'm not even gonna make you pick one or the other, even though it would make my life easier if you all did one certain way. Reach out to me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on all the platforms as Matt B. Davis. Super easy. Or some of you don't even have Facebook, so Instagram's fine. Shoot me an email, mattbdavis at icloud.com. Let us get to the Patreon members. Current Patreon members. Are you ready? Nate Ort. Wait a minute, I can't read all the names. What? They're cutting off here. Nate Ort, Rachel Miranda, Stuart Clark, Benton Wolverton. Benton Wolverton, mm, let's say best name ever. Best name ever. Kim DeVos, Jason Zaleski, M. Stefano Running, also known. You've been my patron for nine months. Oh my God, where does the time go? Obstacle Running Adventures. Samantha Thompson, two months. Mike O'Farrell, two months. Joseph Carollo, two months. Mark Heyman, Two months. Tony Marr, two months. Brian Reynolds, two months. Randy Seeley, one month. Scott Carter, a month. Christopher McLeod, a month. Ken Malise, ugh, I think we all know that guy. One big stuff. Scott Sebastian, Scott Forrester, Ryan Masano, Tyler Bond, Matthew Poonton, OCR Talk, Sophia Harnity, Jeff Schof, Rhymes with Loaf, Sean Rumba. Dan, the man who I met at WTM, Will Hicks, Christopher Stevens, Brad Howlwagon, Eric Wilkin. Thank you, all my Patreon members. I do a monthly drawing for Patreon members where they win free stuff. Gooder glasses, free races, Spartan shit, mutter shit, a box full of goodies I have over there. Maybe some shoes. Patreon.com slash Racing Media. How long have I been talking? Oh my God, we're already at 10 minutes and I haven't even introduced Will. So let's get... To Will Hicks on today's program. Will Hicks. Will, my friend, I'm going to take this opportunity to say 
how much I appreciate you and what you've done for the community. Now, people say these kinds of things to me a lot, and I appreciate it, but I wasn't quite sure how to take it in. I think I've, I've said this before. Now that I've begun to really consume some really good content from OCR people, I kind of get it. Like, oh, this is why I like listening. This is why people like listening to me. So I'll give another little piece of love to, um, to Mike and Caitlin who do great finish line interviews, which I used to be the only one that did that. And it's, I'm super psyched they are. I don't mean to say it that way. I just mean that like, oh, cool. I feel like I'm there. Like, that's cool. That's why people like it. So Will, uh, Will, who's going to say this came up on the thing. Oh, nobody listens to me. Shut up, Will. Just fucking take it. All right. Just this would be one of those things where you stand up there and people are clapping for you and you just stand there and take it. And it's hard. It's hard to take love. It's, it's hard. I know it, dude. It's hard for all of us. We're human. Oh, no, it was no big deal. Oh, no. Screw it. Take it in. Take it in, Will Hicks. Because you've changed the whole thing. I mean, specifically for WTM, I mean. We've got a whole language now. Five stars, sure. Chris from Mendoza got his own song. Yes, Keith wrote it, but you play it in our ears fucking 24-7. You got people saying, I listened to your show in training for this event. And yes, I had people say that about me once upon a time. But people far more... Listen, if if I'm Joe Newby, I know nothing... And I Google world's toughest and you come up, I'm going to start consuming. And then I learn more and then I learn about the community and then I join the community. So Will Hicks, I appreciate you. And I don't know what else to say other than you've changed the game, buddy. You're a permanent part of the structure now. You're a permanent part of the WTM world. Just as, I don't know. I'm trying to think of another example. Piss and cocks. <laughs> That's sort of a, like, is that a compliment? Um, you're just part of it. You're part of us. 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 I'm running out of steam. Running out of steam. But you get what I'm saying. Let's go to the phones. Yeah. Let's go to the phones real quick. Will Hicks, San Diego, California. Perfect. Speaking of which, I don't know if I told you, but the best one of those is all the way back in 2012. If you're listening to the show, if you go back and listen, it's random, random, random. Amelia Boone, Chicago, Illinois. And you're like, oh, no way. And it's kind of, it's like our first. It's kind of cool. Anyway, so it's like this pilgrimage, right? I've been taken for six years now. New Jersey for two years. Las Vegas for four, which when I say that, it sounds crazy. It's so many years. And this year, it's like, yeah, it's at my house. But like, I'm at the thing all day. And then it's like, all right, I'm going to go pick up my kids. It's just weird. You're sleeping in your own bed at night? Which everybody thinks is great, but it's kind of weird. Like, I can't turn off the brain. Now, there are some athletes, like professional athletes, when they're in a big game that's in their hometown, they will go sleep in a hotel just to, not not to get away from their family, but, like, they need to focus. They need to get their sleep. It's a big day tomorrow. Right. It's kind of, so it's kind of weird that I left there and was like, now I'm in Atlanta traffic. I know this road. I know this. Anyhow, uh, how are you feeling? Now that I talked about myself for two minutes, put my That's sweatshirt right, on while sure. you're talking. That's tell, a- tell people how you're feeling while I'm putting my sweatshirt on. I feel good. Go ahead, put your clothes on. If you were a fan, by the way, of two podcasts, if your two favorite podcasts are this and World Service Podcast, this is a fucking treat. I've had you on before, though. This is a team up. No, okay, here's the deal. I listened to your show probably starting in, uh, I want to say 2013 or 2014. I don't know when you started the show. You and I met at World Service 2015 for the first time, but we'd actually been on Twitter or something beforehand. So we had, I'd listened to you at least 2014, 2015. I don't know when Matt B. Davis runs ended and when ORM started, but it was near the beginning of that is when I started. I didn't listen to Matt B. Davis runs. I okay. didn't know about it then. Right. But I, I listened to ORM, and I was like, oh, wow, there's all these backlog of Matt B. Davis runs episodes. So I went and listened to the very first episode you ever did. That's and I was probably like, horrible. Oh, my first episode probably isn't, is probably, I haven't listened in a long time. With Sharkbait, it's probably pretty rough too. So, you know, no shame in that. We all have to skip from here to there somehow. So, right. yeah, no, it's the first, the first episode of any podcast <laughs> except Serial is, you know, Serial <laughs> Serial is the odd podcast. Your podcast and my podcast get better as they go on. Right. Serial is going the other direction right? dramatically. You know, they caught lightning in a bottle. And I, I think that's just not, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I don't know another way to say it, but it's, it's they caught lightning in a bottle. You keep putting them, I appreciate that you're putting them up. You don't have to do that. I mean, I don't know what, what you're not I, doing. I don't want to breathe heavily into the microphone. That only means, that means you're fat. If people can hear you breathing. I'm not a skinny man, Matt. <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not a smart man. People are not going to hear you breathing. It's not like the Joe DeSena episode. Okay, I've just done 17 curls. I'm not doing curls. burpees. That's a good thing. I'm just doing 17 curls, Joe DeSena. Um, by the way, did you listen to the recent episode with Joe DeSena? Your episode? Yeah, yeah. I listened to the very beginning of it, okay. where, where you talked to Joe DeSena. And then you had some random guy in there that I didn't know. Johnny, right? Johnny, who's 
great, Johnny. Right. Big fan. Right. But I didn't. And then I, then I think I skipped to the end to see if you said anything interesting at the end. And then Joe jumped in again. Right. And uh, and so I listened. To, anytime Joe's on something, I'll except his own podcast. I'll listen to it. That's so funny. Who's walking by right now? And Car- nobody. ACC. ACC 360, because this is where all the hot girls and, go into the bathroom. And just asked us why we're recording outside the bathroom. The well, reason I'll is I'll give you because three guesses. You're, you're, you're in production. You understand sound issues. It's very chilly. And wants us to go outside and get hypothermia before World Stuff is Mutter. Yeah. We're not getting hypothermia before <laughs> World Stuff is Mutter. We're the, we're, we're the world. We're not babies. You're a baby. She got a, are you wearing Neptune? From Jason Rulo, not Rulo, as the as those two guys, Piss and Cox always say. Why do you have your name written like ACDC or Def Leppard or Van Halen? Because that's what that's the generation you grew up in. Uh, he's looking at my name tag. Hello, my name is Will Hicks. That is exactly how I write my name every single time. Really? If ACDC never existed, I would still write my name like this. Can I tell you that I it, enjoy ACDC unironically? Just for the record. Why would you be? Why would it be on? Why would it be ironic? They're, they're, it's kind of a. Oh yeah, like they, you know the. Whatever. I enjoy them. They're like, get you pumped up. Anyway. I mean, off topic. I can't believe you would even say that. Um, you know that it took me years. And by the way, what I'm about to say is the exact reason, the gripping reasons people listen to the Obscurious Media podcast. It took me years to stop, A, writing my full name on things. Like when I went to the doctor and you're like, you write like Matthew Davis because that's what's on your fucking driver's license as if they give a shit, right? To write Matt instead of Matthew. And now I don't, it took me years to stop signing my name and now I just fucking scribble. Like I start with, it was sort of my initials and now it's just, what the fuck? You know what? I hated cursive when I was a kid. Right. And I was like... I think this has come up on the podcast. Have I talked about this? I think so. And basically, I made a deal with my mom. Like, if we, if I can just learn to sign my name, I don't have to do any more cursive. That was like, she'll, she'll, uh, like let's just sign... Fine, fine. Just learn to sign your name. Okay? Right. Like, and now, if you give us like a check for me, which I haven't written a check in probably five years, right. but it's Will and the first half of the H. And that's Like, it. you don't even get the whole H now. Dude, if I ever get my credit card stolen, whatever I just signed for that King of Pops, whatever, like, squiggly, I, no one can I can't say that's me or not me. And now you're signing on an iPad, which isn't even close to your actual That's signature. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It should just be thumbs or eyes. This is riveting content, I'm sure. Do you have any idea? Do you know Will Hick? Um... Will, people, Will is stopping to hug people. He's very well liked. Me, not so much. Someone just told me, shall remain nameless, I wasn't sure I was going to like you, but then I saw you with your boy and you kind of showed that you were sort of a nice person. Is that, is that somehow true, Will? Without my children, I'm a horrible person? I don't understand the question. <laughs> is that what you say when you don't answer something? Clearly, she thought I was maybe not a nice person. But the fact that you were able to produce offspring. And like I was nice to that boy. Oh, and you were nice. Oh, yeah. Which, by the way, if she saw us at home, it's like it's like Bart Simpson when the dad is like strangling him. Every parent has moments like that with their child where they have these things. I feel like you don't, though. Oh no, obviously I don't. But I've heard of other people a lot like me. You sound very calm. I feel calm. Very soothing, especially when you record a podcast that almost put me to sleep the other night. I don't remember which episode that was. Hey guys, um, so it's elite week. It was not uh, that bad. And um, I'm clearly. Whispering is to not wake what turned out to be a dog. Not even a fucking person. No, it's not a dog. It's a puppy that's like eight oh, weeks and four oh days my God. old. So you have two kids in your house, and you and your wife and your kids thought, you know what we need? A fucking puppy. We had a dog for 12 years. Thank oh, God. God. I don't know who's going to enjoy this podcast because we haven't talked about obstacle horse racing but at you all. Have any We're I- on the eve of World's Toughest Mudder. T- literally the eve. Tomorrow, it's like World's Toughest Mudder Eve. Tomorrow is World's Toughest Mudder. And we're talking about my puppy. Have you ever I'll listen- talk about it all night long. I will say to you what I say to anybody. Have you ever listened to my show before? I have, several times. Have you listened to my reviews? Several times. Sometimes they... Have you listened to my reviews? I, I have listened to your reviews. I have to. Did you read every fucking one of them? Do you want to read one of my reviews? I would love to. Okay. I'm, I'm looking this up while we're talking. Okay, so I'm going to say... I'm, 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 yeah. A lot of times people say, Matt, I really like that you talk about whatever's on your mind, and then you eventually get back to the point of what OCR is. What, somebody did the other day say, hey, dude... Like, I feel like you should know more, but what are you going to do? Are you trying to find a new one? No, it's, it's, it is a new one. It's one I haven't read yet, but it's not for whatever reason the connection is not pulling it up. So Now, wait. I'm gonna, I want to see what's in your recently updated. Can I read this? Recently is this, updated? Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. It's so, all OCR. Most obstacle OCR. Dominator. Right. Gary V. Yeah. Your own. Link. Strength and speed. Whatever happened to Pizza at McDonald's? Now, you don't listen to the ATL podcast. Not regularly. Okay. But That's I okay. appreciate that you do it. I'm a fan of Matt B. Davis. Okay. And I think it's funny that you listen to Link Endurance and Strength and Speed. I don't listen to every episode. It's funny because some people say that they go, well, it's OCR related, so I'll listen. To me, it has to be good. A lot of it depends on the guest. Sorry, Link Endurance and no, Strength no, no, and Speed. No, no, I'm no, not no, saying you're horrible. Bowen but Miles and, uh, and Evan, like, a lot of it depends on the guest, though. Um, Evan had a competitive eater on, and I, that's great, but I, not necessarily my. See, I, I think I, I would listen to that one. But you didn't. All right, let's talk about stupid obstacles since you're making me. 
Will thinks it's important to talk about talk about obstacle course racing on an obstacle course racing podcast. We've we've not been we're talking re- about no, World Cup at all. We're recording right now on his podcast, but we haven't. We've been talking for ten minutes. Right. We're talking with uh, nine minutes and twenty-two seconds. Past that is asking what we're doing. We've been talking for ten minutes, and we haven't talked about obstacle course racing at all yet. Because it's my show. We talk about whatever I want. We're going to talk about anything you want. See, we've except had this, it's World Cup podcast. We've had this conversation before. I don't think people listen to our shows because right. they like me or like you. All right. So and you disagree with me. All right. Well, I, I'm going to stop you right there. <laughs> now we're getting into it, dude. Now we're getting into it. Will said, I have horrible gas, by the way. I don't know if you can smell that or not. I did not say that. <laughs> you, may, you, you, you interrupted yourself. Will said, I have horrible gas, by the way. That's Sorry, not what happened. I have horrible gas. <laughs> Will said, I know you guys don't listen to this show for me. Now, that would be true. If you didn't, I don't know if, where it would be true, but it's definitely not true when you specifically give people news and information about the toughest event, whatever you want to call it. They're listening for the news and information, I, and I have no problem. But if you were bad at that, they wouldn't listen. What you and I have talked about, let me, let's break it down. What you and I have talked about is where hosts go wrong is they talk too much about themselves, and they think everyone's coming to talk about them, blah, blah, blah. If someone's just good. Which is very common in podcasting. Correct. But if someone is naturally good without, quote, unquote, trying to make it about themselves, people tend to like it. So I think I've always. Fuck off. I've always, I think, like, made an interview about the guest, right? Like, I look at the, I look at the, uh. I look at the um, so one of my heroes. Boy, this is really not OCR related. If you wanna, if you wanna stop, guys, totally stop. Just hit stop. Episode three or four or five, or any episodes I get out of this, will be good. This one's forget. He said four stars. Someone just walked past and said, some people walking by and see Matt and I talking, and they say five stars to, to taunt Matt. And someone walking past just said four stars. <laughs> to taunt Will. To taunt me. Four, I'll take four stars every day. One day, you're at the top of the world. Next day, you're some guy working in a box factory. Working at a box factory? Do you not know that reference? I hear, I know it, but this I don't know Simpsons it. Simpsons one, and you're a pretty big Simpsons fan, I heard. Can we back up, damn it? I've seen, like, eh, I like the I Simpsons. Simpsons. I appreciate them. Oh, man, you made me lose track. Let's have that conversation another time. Let's have this one. Let's talk about, let's talk it's your show. You tell me what you're going to talk about. Well, now we've got a strange lady peeking around the bathrooms. She's, she's either doing a video or a picture. Is that, is that, are we recording? I feel like we're on video because you're not talking as we're looking at your camera. I feel like there's not a flash happening. There was a consi- That's perfect. Carlo Piscatello. Now, you, now here's, the, here's what you did that was genius. I learned many moons ago you could give someone a race code and they would get some good content for you. Sure. Right? I learned that six years ago. You are a genius and said, you know what? You guys use your own accounts and pimp my show. That was genius. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? That was oh, really good. You're talking about my world's toughest social media team. Yes. They are outstanding. Of course they are. If you search the hub right now, you could open up Instagram, hashtag world's toughest podcast. But here's the thing. Here's what's great. It's not even about, like, the hashtag game is good to play, but even if I know nothing about hashtags, in my feed is, hey, did you guys see Amelia's on this week? And they're creating the picture, and they're talking about it. It's awesome. Why did I not think of that? You're a genius. I will steal that idea. Absolutely. I think what we should also, hey, speaking of Carlo Piscatello. Oh, my God. Carlo, come on in here. We've talked for 12 minutes and not talked about one obstacle. I've tried to bring it back like three times. In this case, I think I'm the I think I'm the Josh maybe in this scenario, and he's like the trying to bring it back around guy. I completely understand how that feels. Right. I get it. The difference is the difference is Josh then cuts a conversation down in half, where we all know Matt doesn't know how to touch an editing button. So speaking of which, by the way, like like so I'm so again real talk, guys, real talk. We're all family here. I'm doing stuff with the Tough Mudder live team. Won't be live. We're we're exploring some secrets here. You as if edit that. As if you won't as if you won't be able to tell that it's later. There's gonna be a lot of live to tape going on. So if you enjoy Matt on Tough Mudder Live, enjoy him this year because who knows? He just next got year. fired. <laughs> I've said far worse things about Tough Mudder. They know I gotta speak the truth. They know I gotta, I'm not blasting it now. Don't watch, guys. I'm not, this is gonna come out after. You guys are gonna know after you, the show has been out and you've seen that there was a slight delay because it'll be an update and you'll be like, I think I kind of. Anyhow, God, you guys. Like the World's Toughest Podcast update had that five minutes ago. Exactly. Call up his Catello. That's right. So here's what I was about to say. Yeah. Oh, so you got to stop looking for reviews because you're, you're going to appreciate this. Tell me. So, like, uh, they're like, okay, we're in the pits and, like, to find some good people to talk to. Hey, how about Amy Patrick, right? Hey, Amy, you did World's Toughest a couple years ago. What'd you think? Blah, blah, blah. And one of us stumbles, whatever. So, like, all right, let's do that again. In my mind, I'm like, you guys have never worked with me before, have you? <laughs> right? Because, like, like, in TV, you just do it again, right? right? And I'm like, and then I literally went in my mind, like, because at first I literally thought, like, oh, this is what they've hired me for. So then I was like, so Amy, you didn't want stuff as a before. Blah, 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 blah. But it was like, like, it took a minute to, to feel, like, go into my brain of, like, you know, all right, whatever, fuck, you guys aren't going to, I'm not going to edit this anyway, I don't give a shit. So anyway, blah, 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 you fucked your mother, what's going on? 
<laughs> oh, good God. <laughs> oh, this is so good. I might actually edit that. I might actually edit that. I doubt it. Okay. It's great. Oh, you, have, you're good. you have to look at your time code to know when to edit it? How else would I know? You listen to the show and you say, hey, that's bad. Take it out. Joe, that's why I let Josh edit the show because I don't want to deal with any of that. You've already forgotten the time code you just looked at. Well, I usually put it in my phone. I literally will do that. Like if I'm on the phone with someone and I'm, we're having a Skype call, I'll write down like, you know, they left off the room. Off the record at this time. Yeah. I try my best not for anything to be off the record. Anyhow, I thought you would appreciate. I thought you would appreciate that when I was forced to like do several takes, it took a couple of minutes for me to get like that. It like oh, like I have to be, like, I have to do this again, and this is what you're actually paying me to do. Anyway, I just thought you find that amusing because I'm because I'm not used to doing that. Carlos, so polite. All right, get out of here. Probably. No, it's true. No, honestly, here's the thing. The one thing I do know about if I'm going to be on your show, which you've only been a couple times, but I still appreciate it, is that we because Josh and I we can edit whatever we want, and so I, I know. I asked Josh, he was on with you before I was, and he was like, dude, here's the thing you have to know about Matt's show. Like, if, you, if you're going to say something, know that it can totally be used because he doesn't edit anything. And I was like, oh, okay, good, good tip. Only one time was it bad, though, and I won't remind people what it was, but there was one time I was specifically not to say something, and it was important, and I forgot to. And then I had to go back and Wait, wait hang, on, hang on, you were told to say something you no, forgot? Or you no, told no, not like, to say they something? They were like, hey, don't do that. And I... It was a they. Can we can we try to focus? I might actually have to. Can edit we this try episode. to focus? Let's talk about these stupid obstacles. Will Hicks. All right, you want to come over here? Okay. I think you guys are both gonna do it. So let's do it. We'll play. We'll play hot takes. All right. All right. We'll have him go first, then you. Okay. Hot takes. Hang on, I'm farting. <laughs> okay. Hot what, takes. What do you think the biggest difference between our two shows is? Is, hot is it one of us announces when they fart? <laughs> fart? <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Hot takes. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, my mouth was open. <laughs> Will is now dying. <laughs> I just had the biggest bowl of that of that Irish stuff. <laughs> that Irish stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this could be the worst episode of this show. Have you heard my impression of a uh, of a uh, of um of uh, James Hetfield? Whiskey in the jar, oh yeah. Okay. Right. Hot takes. The stacks. Will Hicks. Stacks is ridiculously tall. Ridiculous. There's a picture going around of people, of a man, I don't know who it is, standing next to the so stacks. This is longer than a hot take. Oh, hot takes? The stacks, it's tall. Uh, the stacks is wonderful, and by the way, I predicted it on the uh, Piston Cox live stream. I fucking was hearing that, and I knew what the stacks was, and I was like, no to the way. I almost messaged you and was like, you may be on to something, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to do it, but dude, Thank fucking you. amazing. Thank you. That was amazing. That was like listening to like... I don't know if you've ever gone back and listened to something that turns out to be true. That was amazing. Yeah, like a prediction? Show. If this was Will's show, we would now cut to that clip. My guess is they're going to, and, and this is totally speculation, they're going to take some kind of like series of like tractor trailer trailers and like stack them and you're going to have to climb them and jump off. Because it'd be so good. Because it'd be so good. But you know what I do do? Songs that annoy the shit out of people. Have you noticed I've been doing that lately? Like your outro song for the last five years? Oh, wow. Not that you, not, you haven't been listening to the show lately. I, I've been listening, yes, but it's... Uh, I'm trying to think of the exact song. I put Friday in there one time oh, by, yeah. by Rebecca Black. I put... Um, I put... I put I put uh, somebody else in there the other week. I've been doing some fun ones, and then I just keep on talking. And that takes work. you got to download the song, but it's fun. They're called Earworms. Okay. okay. What are the options? Uh, no, we'll go first. I'm gonna go you first because you, you'll you'll lead the way. Okay, hot take: uh, electric route versus grip obstacle route. Oh goodness! Uh, I love that they have the option. Uh, gosh, I think I would personally I would probably end up taking the grip route penalty. Wait, hang on. That was exactly as long as my too long hot take five seconds ago. You let uh, him get away. Your with eyes it. were starting to think more. He, I knew it was coming to a close. I think it's an amazing choice to have an option because it. It adds mental stress. to People are talking like, what are you going to do tomorrow? Speaking of which, I know you will. You're the kind of guy that's going to leave here and like put an episode together, like describing everything you saw. You I have at least this two is episodes. Coming, this is coming out after, so oh, you can okay. say whatever. Sure. I have two episodes. I still have Ray Coble and Trevor Psycho as an idiot tonight. No, no, no. But I'm saying you're the kind of guy that goes, hey, we watched the video last night or we saw the film today. What do you call it? The speech. The thing. The obstacle preview? Yes. We, we had a speech. Here's the rules. Are you going to put an episode about that like tonight? I'm not going to do a whole episode about it, but I'll talk about it in the intro for Raya or Trevor. Okay. Um, one more hot take. Let's see. Um, do you already have running FOMO? I, I do. I, let's put it this way. It's not a very hot take. I did. And then once I saw the layout of the course and the weather and everything, I was kind of like, I'm okay skipping this year. 
Honestly, I feel pretty good with my job that I've got. You will be on a future episode discussing what? Oh, vasectomies. I'm really excited about mine. It went well. Hang on, hang on. You're doing an obstacle racing media podcast about vasectomies? Why does he seem so surprised? I know. Are you because still, you're, that's you're why yours, listen right? to your, people listen to your obstacle course racing podcast to hear about vasectomies. And then they complain in the comments like, dude, bring it, which, this is an obstacle course racing. I'm like, whatever. We're humans. We talk about stuff. I, you should too. start a vasectomy like podcast, Matt. There's thousands and thousands of men who've had vasectomies. That you're you're going to have one, right? That, that, that makes sense. Oh, no, for sure. Because otherwise it kind of ruins it if it's just me talking about it. No, I'll totally get one. You already now, had one? Of all... Yeah. See, you're fucking talking about it. I'm curious about it, and I have to have a microphone in my hand. So. This week on the World's Toughest Podcast, <laughs> no, no, we talked to Carlo Piscatello. Here's what Will does, right? Here's my, my hot take on Will that, that's annoying, right? Is that he'll intro you, right? Carlo, got a vasectomy in September. Let's go to the phones. Carlo, you got a vasectomy in September. Like, he just, you already said it on the intro. <laughs> I'm sorry for... You've got that so dialed, by the way. Bringing Don't you think? my guests up to speed. Can you text speed? tough to tweet? Tweet. Wait, 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 text what word? Tough to tweet. Tweet. Two, 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 eight, two, eight. Tweet. Two, two, eight. Uh, no do, you, do you want to sign up for a Merrill Peak Agility Hot Flex? By the way. Do I enunciate like that? Yes. Merrill Does he Peak not? Agility. Really? So, like, good or bad? <laughs> I, I love like it. I'm, I, I love can't it. tell if you're making fun of me or not. <laughs> this is amazing. This is like you calling me sensitive. I'm like, really? I'm sensitive when well, I kind no, of know no, I'm sensitive. I, I'm open to hearing, like, feedback and criticism. I, I have no problem with that. I shouldn't know. I did that. This at one point was going to be like, hey, I'm talking to a bunch of people. I think now you're going to get your own episode. Yes. <laughs> You've not ever never had your own episode? I was on. No, I have not. Not with you. Text tough. To I have my own podcast. I have my own but episode. you know that I think I told you, I also listen to you at one and a half. So I'm used to that. That's the cadence in my head, too. It's like it's very, you know, Christopher Mendoza. It goes that fast for me. Right. Some people do that. But here's the thing. It messes up the timing for the jokes. It works, though. For, I'm just used to it now. Like with the five stars. By the way, speaking of which, as I've told you, again, you guys can comment in the will or in the tunes or the Amazon skill, you always go one too many. So like in the five stars ones, there's one or two too many. Wait, right? wait, what do you mean the five star ones? The, the, the oh, my, montage. The, mix, the montage yeah. that you're in. You got to drop one or two. If mine one of them is, that's fine. But it's like, it's like, who are the famous ones? So Rhea, it should end with the Rhea, the famous one with the giggle at the end, I, right? I'd have to listen. I, when I listen to it, I can tell all of them. I don't know them by memory right now. They're, they're, like Mike Stefano's in there. Caitlin Ritter's in there. There's some kids. Keep the kids, but You're lose, in there. lose one or two. And one of them could be me. It's fine. I have, I have two sets of kids. Two sets. Lose two one kids. set of kids right there. I'm telling you. I, who? Okay, which kids am I going to take? Like, hey, listen, big fan of the show. Whose kids listen to the show? You're out of the show. How do I do that? Well, you don't announce it. It just happens. I don't think I can do that. Listen, I had seven people make an intro for me, and like, I didn't use like Caitlin got more words than you or whatever. Did I get you? Did I use you, by the way? No, I'm not in there. You're not in there. But you did a very nice. Why did I get you? Do you not do it? I don't know. I don't remember. But you, you had people do a nice thing for me. Spider, congratulations on 100. Oh, thank you very much. Did you listen to it? Mike, of course I listened to it. It's when yeah, you yeah. made the big announcement. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, Amelia Boone. Um, always happy to have Amelia on the show. Right. And uh, she's obviously like our biggest crossover star so far. Here's the problem is Ryan, Ryan Atkins is the biggest star, like physical, like nothing, not, again, nothing against Amelia, but Ryan's accomplishments at World's Toughest Mudder are no one will ever match them, or probably never. Well, right, but records are made to be broken. That's true, but five when in a my row, kids five are in a row is like the Bruin, the UCLA Bruins in the 70s. When like, Jackson starts... Six in a row. When Jackson takes NCAA. over for me in 15 years... Right? And there's some new guy from Spain or whatever. When Jackson's winning World's Toughest Mudder, maybe? When Jackson's running World's Toughest Mudder? Yeah, I see him more of the podcasting route. River might run World's Toughest Mudder. <laughs> River's more of the wild child. Speaking of which, um, why, why are, like, I don't know if you saw, like, OCR World Championships. Like, we didn't do so hot. Like, America? The, America seems to be not be the best people in the world at obstacle racing. I think if it was endurance obstacle course racing. I it's think, us. Well, you know what, though? I mean, Atkins and, is Canadian, so. Come over Melissa and say, Shark hey, Bay Dugan, Shark Dugan. Making an appearance. Worlds. War of the world. World of the giant penises. That's what we've been doing over here. We've been rubbing our things. <laughs> 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 this is what happens when I've been up since 5 in the morning, by the way. It's a long day for me. Yep. Not just up, but, you know, like, in work mode. But I always have a good excuse. When you have like a good day of work, a full day of work? Well, today especially, I'm usually up like, I'll try to sleep till 7 if I can, but how are you feeling? I'm nervous. <laughs> okay, can we, you want to play hot takes? What, what, what are your thoughts on the stacks? That it's going to take too much time and energy to climb to the top of those and that the penalty? The penalty for the stacks is 0.49 miles, almost half a mile, but unlike the cliff where you just walk out to the edge and jump down, you have to climb up. But this is not up. the cliff. You have to climb up all the way up. But here's, the, but here's where, because I saw a post about that, and here's my thought. I did not want to jump at the cliff, okay? Famously, I talked about this already, there was a guy that very first time, 20-whatever, and we're jogging, and it's the lap after the... Remember that year because you... Uh, 
because I totally pussied out. We're jogging. Okay, it's noon. It's time to do this thing. It's time to do this thing. That year, we approached the cliff from this side. Okay, not this side like we did in later years. And we're starting to get to the top. And I'm with this guy. And blah, blah, blah. We're talking. And he's like, I'm not going to do this. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I'm scared of heights. And I go, we're all scared of heights at 40 feet up. Like, this is scary. But you have to try it. You have to. You're supposed to be scared of heights at that height. You have to just to fucking do it. And then I ended up doing it every time after. I never bailed on it until, like, at one point I did. At one point, they closed it. They said, well, you can do it one more time. Anyway, don't you feel like it's at Worlds? You got to do it. You got to try it once. No, I did the cliff a couple of dozen times. And that's it for you. The last two times I did it. You, you broke your coccyx. No, uh, you know. Is that a funny word? It is cock funny. No, I did not break that. I'm sorry, you, I'm sorry. How do we pronounce that? Coccyx. How that's do you not say how you pronounce it? It's how do you toxic. S- coccyx. It rhymes with toxic. It's toxic with a C, but it's spelled differently. Do you have an English degree? I was a paramedic. And I was an EMT. That's a true story. In do you Michigan. know that? Do you know that Will has like like nobody really knows about Will. Like everybody knows. Everybody knows about me. I'm my an open book. Will is like if you look up his thing, he was like a Navy SEAL. You're like what? I was not a Navy SEAL. Never you been taught Navy SEALs. I used to teach underwater search and recovery, scuba diving. Right now, Will does Will look like somebody that taught underwater scuba discovery? Were you? Were you? How many pounds lighter were you back then? I was a lot lighter. <laughs> I'm not 300 pounds. Let's be clear. I'm, be, not, I'm not. A, I'm not a elite a level athlete. Clearly, I, I think he might like. He might be Elon Musk. Like you know, there's an English guy that goes out that like ta- that. That could be. That could be him. Mm-hmm. By the way, how have you enjoyed this brewery? I love it. It was a great suggestion by you, Matt B. Davis. Thank you very. Have you enjoyed many craft beers? No, I have not enjoyed any craft beers. I'm running tomorrow. I don't know. I thought you might have a craft beer. No, I sipped on some people's that they said was really good, and they were very, very good. Everyone's enjoying the beer. Okay, did you try King of Pops? Yes, I did. I had the salted lemonade. It was very good. One quick comment. I heard you guys talk about, like, no one knows, like, who Will is or what he does. So even today I was talking with Ryan Atkins and Lindsay Webster. They didn't know either. Name drop. And they were like, oh, he was so great. His interviews were really concise, and he's, like, direct questions and stuff. And it's I was like, like yeah, the opposite nice of Matt. Then they were like, yeah, exactly. Matt kind of wanders. That's not a quote. But then the best part was after we paused for a second, Lindsay was like, yeah, what's that guy do? <laughs> and I was like, mystery. I'm like, he does like financy something or other, investing something. Do you know that he yeah. used to teach He used to teach underwater? Uh, Only because he said that a little while ago. No, it was search and recovery. If, we, if they called us, it was not a rescue. That, that's gross. That's really depressing. Right. You just brought this fucking good show. Night. Yeah, good night, guys. Wait. How many dead bodies have you seen, Mr. Hicks? Have I seen? Yeah. Well, you were also an EM. I've, what do you think happened at Chappaquiddick? At Chappaquiddick? Yeah. Oh, po- we're talking politics now? It's not politics. It's, a, it's an underwater scuba situation. I think it's pretty clear what oh. happened. I know. It's very cold. What's, uh, what's, uh, what's the wetsuit plan tomorrow? What, what, do you, what do you got? Three, two, five, four, seven, six? What do you got? Uh, I'm hoping to layer with my Orca run swim, which is just a shorty, and I'm hoping I can just put lava pants on over them. I don't know what lava pants are. You don't know what lava pants are? Is that a thing? Yes, it's a thing. It's like a ver- like imagine frog skin, um, but they're thicker and they're made they're made for paddle boarding. So the knees even have um, a reinforced perfect frog. This seems like the wettest year since like 2015. Would you not agree? Doesn't it seem like a lot of in and out of the water? Well, yeah, a lot of in and out of the water. But then when you're out of the water, you're in soupy mess. I mean, I'm my shoes are completely disgusting and I might so this is what I was thinking at the obstacle testing is like yeah so hydrophobia isn't a tough obstacle but you're wet again like you know what I'm saying like it's just you're going through a tube that's wet but and it'll be like 35 degrees it's fine on a regular mutter day but it's gonna suck on blah blah day yeah, well, just even swimming, or even if we have to submerge, if we have to get our head wet, that's in a lot of people. But even not getting your head wet, I remember like like an obstacle like uh, I can't block think of. Block the sponsor. Yeah, you're not head wet, but you're fucking you're in the water. Oh, last one, last one. Then I'm gonna let you go and get back to Will. This is at one point the Will Hicks interview. Um, electricity route or grip strength route? I said that I would never do EST again after I did Whistler. I think I'll be yes. again. Same camp. I hate any electric, but I'm like, you know what? I might do it. If you're gonna I might do- have to. If you're going to do electricity, the best way to do it is with a full wetsuit, wearing a hood, and you got gloves on. You know, oh, no, I can beat that. If you're going to do it, first off, I don't have, have any problem with um, operation. That's fine. That new one, you just keep your butt down. You just, like, army crawl it. You'll be fine. And then, you know what? EST usually isn't all the way down to the ground. I will be that person that is army crawling under EST. People can call me all the names they want in the book. Say that I, you know, I'm not doing it the right way. I'm not doing it the motor way. I don't care. I don't want to get shocked anymore. So you nail, you nail operation every time. Yeah. How are you on operation? No. I think I was 0 like, for nine. Like 50 50. It's. No, I'm good. I mean, and maybe um, the the two times ever that it ever zapped me, it was oh, just. They're not kicking us out at eight. By the way, you just made it till eight because like then they open it up. We're not. We don't have to get kicked out at eight, right? Correct. 
It said five to eight. Like, they can let regular people in. By the way, I think they've let regular people in, by the way. I recognize some of my, like, neighbors and their dogs and kids and stuff. Yeah, I know. Well, people... I, I don't care. No, I don't either. I know. The thing is, well, they're... In the front, they were out since they got here. But in the back, that was supposed to be our area. But I, I was like, hey, if you guys want food and stuff, you're welcome. To yeah, of course. Of course. But, okay. They make money, so that's... Right. Yeah. But anyway, no. I will go under, uh, yeah, no, no, operation, the only time it might zap, and me, it's not, nothing like EST, with operation, it's a one, you can let go, EST, you get zapped, and you're stuck, you have to get zapped out. I did, when I, the last time I did operation, I remember doing it, and going, fuck, and like, not letting it go, and then like, trying two more times, then I fucking let it go, and I was mad. No problem. I think operation, the deal breaker is the length of the penalty. In Chicago last year, oh. it, it was like almost a mile for the penalty, and if you wanted to get, you know, 25 miles, or whatever your goal was. In Vegas, I remember it being like, you threw the stupid sandbag down the hole, and you came around. We all were skipping it. I was. No, I still wasn't. Oh, you're a stud. No, it's because to me, if I can continue to do operation throughout an entire 24 hours, and I am able to make it, then I... You're saving a lot of time. Uh, well, my mental clarity is there. Ah. In 20, I pretty much lost. So Wait, hang so. on. No, no, no. So you're using operation as a test of your mental clarity at 3 in the morning? Uh, fuck yeah. I don't think that's a bad idea. Absolutely. I sure did. And then, you know, the one time that I, I was, if I wasn't mentally clear, I would zap and bing, I am awake again. I'd be like, that's another me that's, a math problem. <laughs> that's another jumping off, but that's another jumping off the thing. Is that you're 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 woke up? You're excited. You're like woo! Like it kind of gave you that boost when you jumped off the cliff. Yeah, but you know what? I'm not gonna you know knock myself out. Fine. Everyone is saying like, oh, you're gonna break stuff. We all said the same thing about the cliff. We all said the same thing about the cliff. All I know is I'm not gonna be the first person to jump off the stack. Oh boy. He's been doing this for the last like 15 minutes. I just had a bunch of that Maz Irish whatever, and I think it's giving me gas. Can I ask you one last question before I get back to the Will Hicks and I text tough to tweet, to tweet, tweet, text. I appreciate you endorsing my text to program. To tweet, tweet. Um, how did you get this nickname? Um, I've been a shark nut since I was a kid, and I, was a, I went to school to be a marine biologist. I joined Team Dirty Birds. That's a Tough Mudder team out of Raceway Park. I remember those guys. Yeah, and so everyone has a funny name on the back of their shirt. Do you know Evan Paparis? Yes, I do know Evan Hi. Paparis. Now, if... If Evan, if I don't think if Evan was on his show, I would know his last name, how to say it. I never knew how to say it. Even when you were, we were like talking, like online and stuff, I was like, is it Preparus? Is it anyway? It's Preparus. I butcher all the time, especially at work. I mean, people just absolutely slow. Peppers, papyrus. I mean, I get, I get fucking everything. Evan's a wearing deal. a hot orange bib right now. Yeah, why is your bib darker? I dyed it. Being serious? Did, did you really? <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what I've learned about Will Hicks? You know Will, like, Will's kind of like, you don't really know a lot about Will. He has horrendous gas. I did not know that. Is this a, is this a double podcast episode? We are not DPing it. I'm interviewing Will, and he's being weird. Okay, real quick. Now that you're yes, here. Now I'm, that, I'm the weird one in this scenario. At one point, this was the Will Hicks interview. Now everybody. Okay, your quick thought. Uh, golden carabiner. Use it right away. Save it till later. Ooh, it's a tough one. Um, it really depends on your strengths. You. You, Evan. What am I, I going to do? Not the royal you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, no, Evan, Evan, I don't even understand the, the thought process. Why would you not use it immediately when you know all the obstacles are open, when they might shut some down later, so you wouldn't get the full benefit of the Golden Carabiner? Um, uh, well, if a lot of pacing tactics come in there. I mean, if, you, if, you're, if you're chasing another person and you're looking for placement specifically, and I suddenly jump several positions because I've used it later in the race than you, that's a mental advantage I have. I can see that. I can see that. And if you're... If your upper body is tired later on, you don't need it early. I'm not going to skip all the upper body strength stuff now when I have the strength. Do it later. If you, if you hit your mat, you're like, all right, I know I'm failing this obstacle every lap, and I know I'm passing these three. Like By the time I got to 25, regular person, I'm using it right away. If I'm someone that can save it, lap 15, 16, 17, absolutely save it, right? That's what most of the elites were saying anyway. Yeah. Talking out of turn, they all kind of said, like, yeah, I'll probably wait. But yeah, here's the thing. I'm so such a goofball. When I talked to Eli about it, I was like, is it different miles? He's like, no, it's the same. And I was like, okay. And it didn't even dawn on me till uh, I was talking to what's his name about it on the horrible live stream that I'm sorry any of you had to suffer through. But it was like, oh, like you could save like 10 minutes, right? Or eight, what do you think? Yeah. Eight obstacles? That's a good chunk of time. That is a good chunk of time. Yeah, 10 minutes, yeah. That's huge. If you're, if you're ahead of somebody or behind somebody, Right, and you use it, and all of a sudden, boom. So that's. All right, are you gonna are you gonna are you, are you gonna jump off the stacks? Yes, I am gonna pay attention because it looks like by the time you climb up there and jump off, like the penalty on does not look that long. Will you try it once? Absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, I, it, I, will, I will do what. Is Melissa was for not trying it at least once? A hundred percent. Yes. If 
By the way, do you guys all know that they're doing this interview in front of the bathrooms? <laughs> I was on the way to go pee. I thought that was a bar. All right, get out of here, guys. Get out of here. Good to see you guys. Low battery. Would you think? I, oh, you saw the disco ball? What if I never use this episode? If this was you, you would totally just trash it, probably. You're fine, you're fine. I think it's good, though. We're kind of getting people's... This is kind of one of your jams, Okay, okay, like... how about this, then? How about this, though? If it had to be about obscuration, why do people love the two Ryans so much? Why are those the best episodes for people? Oh, because I think Ryan Woods and Ryan Atkins are charismatic, and people flock to them, and they're enjoyable to listen to, and they're two of the top athletes in the sport. I would listen to... Oh, my... Goodness. I would listen to... Can you please describe what we're looking at right now? Okay, so a, a baby, I want to say a baby, more of a toddler, maybe... That's a baby, Will. Maybe 11 months, I was going to say 12 months, just walked in. She's wearing a little cute little outfit with shoes, but she's wearing a pit crew headband. A, it's the cutest thing you've ever seen, is what he's trying to say. It's like top three. I have two kids, so... I have kids, too, and not all kids are cute, right? Not all kids are cute that aren't yours, right? Most babies look like Winston Churchill. Well, they can look like aliens. That child who just learned to walk man that was cute it also makes me like like because like your kids are like oh god there's just pains in the ass and then that's like a super cute kid all right i'm so, sure that kid never cries never gives his parents any sure problems so it now is weird that we're by the bathrooms right it started out not so weird but now it is weird we're getting a lot more foot traffic now but i feel like we've covered kind of the big things we've covered the stacks we've covered the electricity but i'm surprised that you of all people you like think about stuff that you didn't think to saving it would be good saving it till when you weren't you know what i hadn't anymore. actually thought about it a lot but i think as i'm kind of thinking about this out loud for someone like you or me running the course yeah use it right away we would use it right away for the elites and, and evan had a good point like you save it for strategy you know you're you're 5 10 minutes behind the guy the guy in front of you or for evan's the team in front of you and then yeah maybe you use it to leapfrog a little bit Maybe you wait till you know they've used their golden carabiner. You have it in your back pocket. You think, hey, how long is this, how many miles is this race going to last? I'm going to use it in my second to last lap, get ahead of them, and close it down. Now, you asked old Jack Bauer, that machine himself, his predictions, but you did not give your own predictions. Would you give your own predictions? No, I wouldn't. Because? Because one, 99 times out of 100, I'll be wrong. And you don't hurt people's feelings? Like, you can say it. It's fine. No, no, no. It's weird for me, too, because right. I know these people, and I always feel sure. a little bit weird, so you can say that. Well, here's, like, uh, Ray and Lindsay, for example. Right. I think everyone agrees one of them is probably going to get first, and one of them is probably going to get second. Ray and Allison. Ray, what did I say? I said Ray and, Ray and Allison, of course. That's what I meant. Lindsay is in the team category. She's right. not in competing. Against. Um, so between Ray and Allison, one of them is probably going to get first. One right. will get second. Right. Ray won last year. Allison has gotten second place twice. No one else has gotten second place twice. So the cold, does that play to Ray's strengths or does that play to Allison's strengths? It probably plays to Allison's strengths. I think the colder the weather gets, the more miserable and sucky it gets, the stronger Alice, the better it is for Allison. Ray is no no slouch though, but she had a, a bad DNF like two weeks ago, hypothermia. And hypothermia doesn't, it, it has effects. It can last longer. So who's going to win? I don't know. I really don't know. I could, it's not I, about people's I, feelings. You no, don't no, no, care. I know that. No, no, I know that. I, 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 Would Ray, you whisper it to me off record? I don't know who's gonna win. Like, I, I nobody couldn't. knows who wins. That's how. That's it's called. That's what's called predictions. Nobody knows who's gonna win. It's fun. It's what we do in sport. Listen, I'm I'm annoyed when people ask me. So I'm just being honest. Who's I'm annoyed. Be, listen, here's what. I, half the time I say something, people message me and go, "Great, how do you really feel? Tell me now, like on this message privately." And I'm like, "I've already said how I feel. I either wrote the article or said the thing. There is no other feeling I have about it. So that's what kind of bothers me. Is like, and sometimes I just don't feel like. Sometimes like I don't feel like. Like Tahoe it was like. If you ask me, I'll mention it, but I'm not going to do a whole fucking show about it, blah, blah, blah. Someone told me they think Ray is going to do 100 miles tomorrow. You know who thinks he's going to get 100 miles? Confidently told me he was going to get 100 miles? Can you guess? Knowing all the athletes? Who confidently told me they were going to get 100 miles? Is he individual or team? Individual. Person. A dude. Someone I've talked to recently for Elite Week. It's somebody you've always... You just, you just guess at this point. Trevor Sykos. Trevor Sykos. All the, all the people I talk to. All the people I talk to. What do you think? I don't know. I'm just going to do my own race. Kind of pace myself till midnight, then really kick it in gear. Trevor, I think it's going to be the weather, blah, blah, blah. It's about, the elevation's about the same as all the other ones. I'm going to get 100, 105. And I was like, really? He's like, yep. He's finished on the podium every year for the last four or five years. I have to count him. I appreciate him. his confidence, but I'm like, okay, bro. It's a bold statement. This is a new venue. But uh -huh. it's not, and he's not like a dick, right? He's not Hunter McIntyre. Sorry, Hunter. He's not like, you know what I mean? He's not like, I'm going to fuck you at 100. You know, he's just like, yeah, I'm just going to Hunter's everything. never said that in his life. Right. All right, listen, I really got to interview these two. We never got off the ground. I feel like this was a failure to launch. He has been ripping ass since we got here. 
If it was true, I would 100% fess up to it. Well, Hicks. This was a good talk. I, I don't know if I talked about World's Toughest Mudder you did more than... We did, some, we did some hot takes. Oh, we did some hot takes. All right. But we had, we had special guests. People came by. Yeah, this is going to be its own episode. This might be like Christmas time, though. Like, we'll get the other, the other six episodes about, about World's Toughest. The ones that are actually about World's Toughest? And then it'll be like... Matt and Will shoot the shit by the bathroom. I might call it that. Might be the name of this episode. Now, see, Caitlin, say that under the microphone. <laughs> All right, here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say. Will, Will Hicks, this time Monday, what will you tell me how many miles you got? You know what? I always come in looking to get 50, right? Right. This year, is that would be optimistic at best. And, you know, we get 25, 30. You know, here's what I want to do. Keep moving. Just keep moving. Here's what I want to do. Don't, is, don't be like, I'm going to nap and go back out in the morning. I don't, don't want to do stop. That. If I can make, if I, all 24 hours, if I can earn the sunset in the morning, it's... Day, what it, not, not tomorrow morning, but two days from today. If I can earn that sunset, that will be a good race for me. All right. Well, I, in case I never said it recently, I love you, Will Hicks. You're very kind. Can I hug you? I guess. He's getting very awkward. Gave the Uber man five stars. Left the restaurant five stars. I was fucking with a five star. She done fucked about five stars. Sidebar. Pull off all the kids fight like that. This is Will Hicks. This is Will Hicks. Hey, Will Hicks. I'm going to ask you the questions I've been asking the athletes so far. Is there any obstacle that you loved over the weekend? Like, what's the obstacle that you loved? I think my favorite new one, and, and probably I'm not the only one, was Twin Peaks. It was really fun. It was unnecessarily hard at the very beginning. You needed, like, a boost to get up to start the obstacle. But there were several obstacles like that where you needed a boost. You needed help just to start the obstacle. Mutterhorn, Twin Peaks. Uh, several, there were several walls like that. I kind of love how they turned Mutterhorn into, like, they turned, like, just the cool wedgie into, like, oh, this is an actual, like, thing. You need help. It, it's, you need a plan. Yeah, and it's a hard obstacle. You had a couple easy ones right before that. You had Pyramid Scheme and then Kiss of Mud, and they had a long walk through kind of treacherous woods. And Kiss then, of Mud looked really deep. Oh, no, no, not Kiss of Mud. That was uh, mud, mud, mile. mud Mile. Mud Mile was deep and nasty, and it was that kind of mud where, like, if you get it on your face, like, you look like you just had a mud bath at, a, like, a spa. Right. It just kind of, like, your whole, it filled I want to describe Will's head as covered in raindrops right now. He looks like he's glistening. We're, we're at pre-brunch talking, and I just came out of the rain, so that's probably why it looks like I have rain on my head. That's exactly why I have rain on my head. Will Hicks, I, I want to be the first to say congratulations, by the way, and here's what I, here's what I thought of yesterday. You are the first OCR podcaster to cash in at World's Toughest Mudder and have 100 episodes of your OCR podcast. Evan does not have 100 episodes yet. Oh, Evan Preparis has probably finished in the money before, hasn't he? But he's not. But he's not, We discovered that yesterday. But he's not done of 100 episodes. So that's you. You're the first guy. It's like the 4040 Club, right? I've got both. Right? You've got over 100 episodes and in the money. So my team, my relay team, we didn't actually relay. We just, the four of us stayed together the whole time. <laughs> this is like a mini reunion for us, my, my team. Right, you do this every year. We do this every year. We used to work together like 20 years ago. Five fat guys, what are you called? Uh, team Fat Boys. Uh, we, which you, they wanted to change our name to Five Stars because on the course, Aww. it was very sweet of them, right? When someone would recognize me or they'd hear me talking, they'd be like, Five Stars. Right. Uh, but so we stayed together the whole time. It's like one of us is from Colorado. I'm from California, Wisconsin, South Carolina. We're all from all over. But once a year, we come together. We'll sub some This is the only time we see each other. And we just hang together for 24 hours and catch up and talk about families. And, and uh, we, we walk most of the time. We usually run the first lap. And then depending on how we feel after that. Uh, so we didn't really beat anybody. We finished in fifth place. So we finished in the money. But we didn't beat anybody. We just kind of outlast it. But that's what this is. That's what the 24-hour race is. This is what I've been saying. For the last 24 hours, what I've been saying is, you know, this amazing pass happened. Did you see it? Did you see the video for the amazing pass? Yes. Okay. Of Mendoza and yes. Psychos. Yes. This, in football, they say this is why they play the game. This is why it's a 24-hour race. It's not a 22-and-a-half-hour race. It's not an 8-hour race. It's 24 hours because that's what can happen. So dare I say... Um, you know, Marco and those guys, like, oh, one guy got hurt or else they'd have, would have. Well, would have, could have, should have. That's the whole fucking point. Oh, it's like everybody last year, well, I was on pace for 3,000 miles. And it's like, yeah, because they hadn't turned on any obstacles yet, right? And X, Y, and Z. So listen, you outlasted, so you're in fifth. I, and I'm not, I don't want to take anything away from my team. We're very proud, super excited. And we're like, my wife's like, well, if you guys had run a relay, like two at a time, could you have gotten fourth? <laughs> right? I'm like, babe, we got fifth. I'm so happy. <laughs> don't push it. <laughs> Um, Whoa. How was your day yesterday? My day was, uh, I would say, great. Um, I slept, which I wasn't, which I didn't feel great about at first. It's my first time sleeping. Uh, but what I figured out as the day went on was, uh, I thought I was going to say this for my intro, but hopefully I'll remember that I said it so that I won't say it again in my intro. Um, when you go to bed, when you, come, when you leave at 10, 11 and come back at six, there's still eight hours of racing left. The race isn't over until 1.30. So even like when it got started getting close to 12, people were like, no, 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 people are still going out. Like, because it doesn't end until 1.30. So I had an amazing experience. I had an amazing experience. Um, I get to work with, you know, 
TM and still like literally do my job at the same time. Like while I was waiting for them to be like, okay, Matt, we're going to go to you and Trevor. Like I'm sticking my phone out and doing my thing. So I'm pretty thrilled, dude. It seems like having it in Atlanta is probably ideal for you. Is this whose interview is this, Will? You're not talking. One of us has to talk. Tell me. Ask me a question. Oh my God. This is like having sex with a chick and she's like telling you what to do, but not in like a cool, sexy way, but in an annoying way. That's exactly what this is like. Was there an obstacle that you hated? And, uh, yes. And again, I'm probably not alone in thinking this. He's either doing a selfie or videoing us. I can't tell. That's one of my teammates. That's Scott Forster. He's actually one of your Patreon supporters. You should say hi to him. Fucking yes. So we love him. Um, least favorite obstacle with unquestionably was Lumberjack. It was about a foot too high and about three too many. Right. It was, I don't know, seven or eight of those giant, you know, 12 inch thick log in front of you. And they're in their upper chest height, probably four and a half, five feet high, and you could kind of get over them by yourself the first time through, maybe. But, well, for the men, the women, I don't even think that right. happened. Right. So this is much like Vegas. You ran Vegas 2016, right? Yes. The Liberator, or uh, Liberator, right? Liberator. But also, um, people, I always say this, like, people think it's like, oh, it's the water ones. It's Augustus Gloop. It's no. It's like anything where you use your whole body, even getting over a wall, becomes a fucking chore. I always feel like when you land off a wall, it's slow motion. It's not just boom. It's if you want to just describe what I just did. You gooshed onto the carpet here in the convention center. And and it's like you feel like it's slow motion. You feel the As your, your foot, foot, and then your your leg kind of flexes, and your body kind you of feel compresses. every fucking bit of that. So as soon as some, because so I didn't do the race, but when I saw someone show that picture, I knew that's what they meant because it must have just sucked every time. Like oh, gotta hop over this fucking thing. I remember you posted in 2016 right after the race, like backstabber sucked or whatever. You had a post almost backstabber like that. is a cunt. I believe is what I said. Sorry for those of you that are offended by the c word. And so else, yes, as soon as I said that, I was like, a, someone else had a post almost exactly like that, flipping off, flipping off uh, lumberjack. I forgot the name of it. I hate right. it so much. I already blocked it out. Right. Uh, but yeah, like that, and even like the mutterhorn. It's it's simple, but it every part of your body. It takes every part of your body to climb up that stupid thing and then climb down the thing, and just and and on the way down, it's much easier. But you're like, I just don't want to drop and die. There were people. I saw two people going down mutterhorn backwards. Like they had their face out. They were holding on to the safety net and kind of sliding down the... Seems, which, seems awful sketchy. It seems very sketchy. It was way faster, but if the, the margin for... Like if you fall, your, your race is definitely when, over. When you think about it, a 24-hour race, aren't we pretty lucky? Several people don't just fucking tumble up. That's it's <laughs> it's that's a great obstacle. It's iconic, and it should be at every world's toughest mutter, but right. man, it, it could go bad. And do, you know, um, do you know Melissa? I don't know Melissa. I've heard her name, though. G okay, go ahead. Do you have a card? All right. Well, guess what? I will actually edit that out. Doubtful, but okay. If I'm listening to this, if I'm listening to this back as I do when I go on a run, I'm going to run back in the house and fix it ASAP. I'll be mad at myself if I don't remember to fix this. Do you ever listen to the full episode before it airs? No, we talked about this. I, I do. I spot check. Just like like five and a half minutes, nine minutes. Well, like, hey, buddy. Well, um, it used to be on the phone. I had to do way more work to to like get out the cut out the stuff and like oh shit, there's echo. Now I've got it pretty good that like it, it's almost it's almost ready to go. Just me saying like you ready to get going? Great. Or sometimes I'll kind of let an odd question go first because that's kind of fun. And then you know the end. You know, as you know, I don't really usually do the okay goodbye goodbye goodbye. I just kind of cut the last answer and then that's it. Once in a while, doesn't someone say something where you're like, I can take that out for you, or are you sure that's what you want, or... Yeah, see, I never do that. I want the juice. I want the good stuff. What if it's... I feel like we have a relationship to maintain with the athletes and with the company. Like, you don't want to... I don't... I don't want to sabotage someone's career or jeopardize someone's livelihood. I always... This, okay, this is this is one of my first lessons ever. I don't know if we have ever talked about this. First time I ever had Tough Mudder on the show was Matt Johnson. It was shortly after two really bad things. A guy died... And they had that really horrible storm that, like, traffic, it was, like, the first big traffic fuck-up. And this is your first interview with Team HQ? my first one ever. And it turns out I had talked to Joe, like, two weeks before, so I called it. I called it the big one because it was Tough Mudder and Spark. It was, like, it was a huge deal at the time. And their guy, no longer with them, was kind of a dick. From no, nothing I, and so at the end, I got a lot of messages from people that said things like, was it just me or was that guy a dick? So that, to me, kind of taught me the lesson of I never have to, like, point them in the right direction, right? It's the whole, like... Do you know what I mean? Like, here it is. I mean, I guess, I don't know. I'm sure I've got some bias in there. I'm sure I've got some, like, maybe bias in there. But, yeah, no, I can't think of anything where I've said, like, I know they don't want. Like, twice they've maybe said, can you lose that? And I said yes. But most of the time people just don't. I also, I'm not that 
heavy. I mean, like, so I remember the first time I was talking to, not the first time I was talking to, but one of the first times where that happened was talking to Isaiah at Battlefront. He had gotten accused of cheating, and there was some shit that went down, and as we were, like, walking and talking, he was saying what he felt, which was, didn't make him look great, but I was like, this is this guy talking on the microphone. But we have different shows. What? We have very different shows. And it's true that when someone's on the phone with you, they know they're being recorded, and when you have a microphone in their face, they know they're being recorded. So it's, there is... It's not all on you or not all on me. I get that. Right. But at the same time... Well, there's this notion that anytime you talk to a member of the media, you should blah, blah, blah. And I, I always distinctly say, this is just me and you. This is just two guys talking. But if I need a quote from you later, can I ask you for... Like, I definitely do that. Whereas I think reporters out in the world don't. Reporters out in the world is like, we were having drinks and he did, said that. You didn't, say, you didn't say this is off the record. You didn't say it was so. off the record. Which I think is, that's, that's shitty. Uh, I want to get back to you and your obstacle. We, we talked about what you loved. We talked about what you hated. Did, did you go off the stacks? I did not. I did not. It was scary. And you know what? I missed. I, we got past the stacks right before it opened. And then we maybe had a gold, golden carabiner. So we were. it was like several hours after it opened before we had how a many, chance. How many miles did you get? 35. Nice. So what is your 35 best? crazy winter miles. So what, you know, what is your best ever WTM? That was my best ever WTM. Yeah. Like, I, I, I am already saying... 40 is the new 50. This was definitely, this was definitely like any other year, like whatever it is, like this one is like, woo, hard. Yeah. I mean, you could proudly wear that 50 mile bib, even though I think wearing the bib outside of the event is a little lame. I get people want to do uh, it. Bibs are sweet. If I, someday when I do earn my 50 mile bib, like you and every other OCR okay. podcaster has, it seems like, okay. I will how wear about, that thing every single day. I will be buried okay, in how my about 50 this? mile bib. How about this? It's okay to wear it. It is okay to wear it here this morning, even to the brunch. I'll give it to you. But don't wear it to regular mutters. And people wear it to regular mutters. And I think that's lame. That is awesome. What, you mean they should wear their white bib to regular mutters? They shouldn't wear a bib at all. I have a Team USA bib. I can wear regular mutters now. I mean, I guess that, but see, even that is more like the, the legend born thing. Where it's like, but it's like, are you really representing USA? Like, I'm so proud to represent my country. Really? We picked you? You sound like Vinny Gifford right now. Oh my God. Oh my God. That was, I, I want to literally drop the fucking microphone. I just got competed. I just got compared to penis breakdown. Can we do your interview with me now? Because you clearly want to ask me a lot of questions. Can we just absolutely? Is there anything? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Do you think Toughest is coming back? I do, and I think. Do you think daytime be... Toughest is coming back? I don't have a lot of comment on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Will was just vehemently shaking his head. No, ladies and gentlemen, I need to audio cues. Um, you know what I'll tell you? I saw, I saw something last night. The tagline for Toughest Mutter has been eight hours right. through the night, and that one was. And recently, the tagline has been changed to. Eight hours nonstop racing. Right, but here's what's interesting. Um, I love mixing it up, but it's funny because like we we I can't think of a recent one, but I feel like there's always been a few of these, and you're usually the guy who breaks these. You're like, hey, you know, this map came out and it's next to a Walmart, and we know that Nolan loves Walmart, so it means that next year's WTM. You know what I mean? Like, haven't you speculated? Yeah, like, well, I'll, I'll find, and sometimes you, you find these weird strings to kind of pull. Right, and sometimes and you it's see, right, and sometimes, sometimes, it's wrong. And sometimes it's terribly wrong. But Wait, it's fun, either way, it's fun to speculate. I don't want to get into your hatred of Atlanta. We'll talk about that later. But all kidding aside, didn't you narrow it down and your guess wasn't Atlanta? Okay. I was real hard against Atlanta because you were so pro Atlanta. Of course. It was fun. So even when I was like, it's got to be Atlanta. Because of where the, when they scheduled the regular Tough Mudder, that was the biggest kind of giveaway, right? And you came up with that. For, you were the first one to recognize that even before I think Tough so Mudder. like a couple weeks that. before. Yeah. It's usually the thing. So I, I don't know. How, I don't even remember exactly how, but I narrowed it down to like three cities based on where the toughest were. And based on weather, and based on where the regular Tough Mudders were scheduled, right? And it, Atlanta was one of like my top three, right? But because you were so pro Atlanta, I was like, no, it's definitely one of these two, right? And so eventually, I had to give it up. I was like, yeah, it's clearly going to be Atlanta, but I didn't want to lose, right? So. Well, and I have to say, I don't know as of this moment. I'm hoping they're going to reveal, right? I don't. I literally do not know. We all assume it's a two, three year deal, but then they, but then they see, again with the whole schedule thing, they put they put the basically the week before, the week after, didn't they? The, I think this week cur- next year is the regular Tough Mudder. Right, and there's no way they're gonna do it later in the year. They would kill us. We would die. Okay, I don't, I don't know where. I heard a rumor, and again, that we're talking before brunch, and we're all gonna know the truth very soon. Pausing for a picture. Exactly. That should be the caption. But there's a, there's a, there's a right now, right before brunch at the end of World's Toughest Mudder, there's always tons of rumors, right? And 90% of our questions gonna be answered in an hour. So it's like this is a ridiculous team to talk about. But just for for 
posterity's it'll sake. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Here was what the rumors were saying before brunch, that it could be a couple weeks later in the year. It'll be back in Atlanta next year. There are speculation about 12-hour toughest mutters. We don't know if that's true or not. There are tech- speculation about daytime toughest mutters again next year. There are tech- speculation about more toughest mutters than we've had in the past. So, and again, these are all, How about this? all rumors and speculation. I cannot quote anyone or source anything. It's all rumors. How about this? How about world's toughest mutter and then you mix in the regular Tough Mudder people. That whole crazy idea. That was a, two or three years ago, there was a survey that went out after World's Toughest Mudder to the members of the community. World's Toughest Mudder, the World's Toughest Mudder, not the Tough Mudder, but the World's Toughest Mudder community. That you want to describe what we're seeing, what's they're, happening? They're opening the doors to the convention center. Everyone is hobbling, limping in to get in line fast to get a good seat and reservation. I, I should for have saved a breakfast. table, but I guess I'll stand for most of the morning, too. They usually have a media table, don't they? Well... Do they have a table for you? I didn't ask. Now that I'm kind of on both, whatever, I didn't really ask. I had a seat last year at, at your table, right, right up right, front. Right, but I had asked, I think. But I, oh, but I sat in back with my team. So how, I want to know, could you possibly count how many five stars you got last night or whatever, day, 24 oh, like hours? people saying that to yeah. me on the course? Yeah. More than 100, less than two. Because here's the thing. Yes, it's nice, like I'm recognized in a lot of places, but the biggest events of the year, so Tahoe, OCR Worlds in here, Everybody, because these are the most serious people. So I have to say that this year, more than ever, it felt like, and maybe because I'm on the Tough Mudder live stream stuff, like I literally, like I would walk under Mudderhorn just on the way to something, and Bobby Davis, Bobby Davis, like it's like pretty awesome, right? It it's does. Pretty, it's pretty, pretty cool. Feel really like we don't do this for the love. You do it for the money. I do it because I just it's a good hobby. It's right. A, I say it for the money. I have a job. I do for money. Right. Like we all do things for money. Do you work hard for the money? I work hard for the money. So you better treat her right. There you have it, Will Hicks, my friend, my amigo, my occasional competitor, Will Hicks, five stars. Thanks for listening so much. If you want to support this program, go to obstacleracingmedia.com. Sorry, go to patreon.com slash obstacleracingmedia and donate. You can support this program for as little as a dollar a month, and you can get a lot of free, cool stuff along the way. You can leave that review on iTunes by pressing the purple podcast button or text tweet, tweet, tweet. Sorry, guys. Will Hicks in the mind. Can't let him go. All right, guys. Oh, I still got more WTM content. I didn't make it mean to sound like that, but I just, there's so fucking much of it. But I will bring it all to you. Hope you're enjoying your turkey week. I may or may not have one more before turkey. Who knows? But uh, reach out to me. Let me know if you want to be on the team. I'm going to be on the stats team, the cool content team, the fucking rad fucking, uh, what do you call it, graphical team. Let me know. Love you, Mishmin, and I got to run.